All right, so today we are, it's our last day in St. George. We've hung out here for, she's off and on for almost, I think six weeks now. And I'm so sad because this has been probably the best, uh, well, I can't say the best, but one of the best months of my life. I just think it's been great having overall, everyone's been really happy. We've kind of found this uh, level of compromise uh, for our entire family, you know, the weather's been great, so we have something to do every day. So I wanna talk real quick about, uh, you know, what it's like for my kids and what they think of it, because I understand it's a huge concern if you're in a full-time RV, you think, oh, what about my kids? What about their social life? We've been trying to post a lot of things about that. So real quick, before I go into that, make sure you've already subscribed and click the like button because it really helps the algorithm a lot. And so let's talk about it, full-time RVing. So why I chose to do it to begin with six years ago was in a little bit selfish reasons that I wanted to go create memories with my kids. And we, you know, I would catch, when I was living in a house, we lived in these gorgeous, huge houses, pool for, a lot, for about a decade, a house with a big, big pool. And then we moved to a house overlooking the ocean. I'd homeschool them and stare out the window and there'd be dolphins swimming by. It's not like we were trying to escape anything. I mean, I feel like I had checked off the American dream. But I thought, you know what? My kids, we have these huge houses and my kids are always right next to me. They're always in the same room as me. They're always, if, I'm, if I'd say like, hey, I'm gonna go to the beach, they'll be like, I'll come with you. They weren't, I don't know, they weren't um, craving this life away from me. So I thought, well, she's you guys are around me all the time. Like, why not be in an RV? Why not just go experience life and, and travel? And so we did that and overall, I think, it's been amazing for their self-growth because as individuals, they're very much uh, in tune with what makes them happy, what they want out of life. Um, they're really good at balancing themselves. They're very mindful. So those things help. Now, there've always been trade-offs. Trade um, the other thing is our RV living has been uh, all over the place, meaning like sometimes we lived in an RV in San Diego for in one spot for three months at a time. And sometimes we are, um, traveling in one of our RVs and sometimes we're putting all, all of our stuff or what, whatever we can carry in a backpack and flying to Europe for six months or flying to Bali and New Zealand for a couple months. It, there's no consistency. So everything, it always looks different. Uh, some parts of it have been really fast travel. Most of it has been really fast travel. The pro of that when we travel fast for my youngest kids, it's been really good because there's routine in in the movement in like we wake up in a new trailhead we either do a hike or a bike or a climb uh we eat a meal and then i drive somewhere and when i drive they get to rest and watch movies and for my youngest two that was really successful then we get to a new campground they get out they've they've done something they've rested they are fed they get to just kind of be kids i personally think that's the best type of travel for our family but it's not always the best travel for my husband and it's not always the best for my oldest child because they need a little bit more routine and consistencies, which is what we've done here in St. George. We've been able to, you know, have, we, we might have to move camp sites, but we haven't moved campgrounds much. And so for them, they like the, the feeling of waking up and not having to feel like they have to move or have to do something. It gives them more time to adapt. Well, it's been actually worse for my youngest two, I think this way, because they have, to, they're almost too time rich. I probably could give them more school, but that's not fun. Um, so they're almost too time rich because they are literally in this campground. They don't have, they're not being forced to go rock climb with me every day. So I'll let them stay back with Victor. They don't have, almost, they almost don't have enough direction to their day. So that's, I think that's something that if you end up full-time RVing, and you're not in a campground with other kids. That's a key part. When we lived in Mission Bay for months on end, we would have other kids in the campground and that was totally different experience. That was great. Jirai and Tati would like from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. just roam the campground with their friends and it was wonderful. It can be negative too, like during lockdown, like those kids kind of got sick of each other day in and day out. But you had that feel of like that neighborhood feel and it was wonderful. There is a big part of me that misses that because it was so good for Dry and Tatiana. 
uh, when we sit here and they're time rich, they just, they start to get on each other's nerves. And so finding some balance between those two things, you know, it's really sad the state of the world right now because we're not able to connect with other humans as much as we really need to. So I do hope that uh, through this great awakening that we get back to that because that is my only complaint right now is those two, they need more of a social life than, than this, but not at the expense of lack of oxygen. So we'll see how that pans out for our family. Um, it means though a big part of RV living with kids, it means you as a parent have to be more fun. You have to play this role of, of a friend more. And uh, I know that's why Isabel and Gabby are so successful with it because I've always gone out of my way to be like, what sounds fun to you guys today? And I make it happen. And even if like I laugh because at first I used to lead rock climbing and set the ropes for them so that they could do something like that. Or I was the driving force like, let's, let's go do this great hike. And, and they um, were younger and they, you know, it was probably hard for them. Now it's flipped. Now I'm the weak link. Now they're the ones like, mom, we're gonna go climb here. And I have FOMO like, oh, don't go climb without me. Okay, I'll suck it up and do it. Or they're, you know, the the mountaineering things that Gabby wants to do this summer, I know I have to game up and be like, all right, I can do this. I'm gonna be a little scared, but it's, you know what payback is. So it's totally a different mindset as a parent. You have to go overcome your fears and and your like self-limiting beliefs that as a mom, I'm supposed to provide whatever, security and safety. Yes, you're supposed to be keep your kids safe, but hey, you can be adventurous and you can uh, you can learn new skills for sure. I didn't learn how to surf till I was 36. I didn't learn to climb till I was 37. You know, you definitely everyone has a little bit of an adventurous, you don't have to be as crazy as me, but you have an adventurous spirit inside you. So let's go see what the kids have to think about it because I, I was talking about it last night, but I didn't really tell them um, that I was gonna just walk into the RV and put them on the spot and say like, hey, what do you think of RV living? So Danny, what is it? Pro, con, RV living. One for each. Yeah. Um, I guess the pro is that it makes me get out of my comfort zone but the con is that I like routine so what can't. what do you mean about your comfort zone well I mean like living like this makes you have to adapt and each day is not going to be the same as the last one so you have to be ready for any sort of emergency or to do anything whatsoever but at the same time you know I like my routine and sometimes it's like oh god we're moving to another place now Right, so you like the comforts of your house. What about um, like the difference in hiking? Like because if we live like this, we get to go to a lot of different hikes and see a lot of places. Do you think that's been made it worth the discomfort? Yeah, probably overall, like sixty forty. <laughs> Not fifty nine. No. No, I didn't want to go into. I could have went sixty one point four eight. Okay, uh, but I. Just rounded it Spoken down. like a true type five. Yeah. So overall, you think it traumatized you more or gave you more? I set him up for that one. Do you think uh, the trauma you'll ever question. outlive the trauma? It must not be that bad. You're 21 and you're yeah. still here. You love it. Well, you know how I'm supposed to answer. <laughs> All right, Jariah, pros and cons. What's it really I don't like? Get to, I, well, you can't take anything big in the RV. Like, you can't instruments or anything big that you like oh yeah what instrument do you like drums yeah you got a big drum set yeah so like. i can't put that right here yeah but the pros is that i'm add so we get to travel a lot so so it's yeah. worth the living the yes the drums i don't have to look at a freeway my whole life <laughs> all right gabby pros and cons yes pros is you have the opportunity to do what you love every day and even if that means starting a business, including and uh, rock climb and stuff outdoors, uh, cons, um, you'll never be normal, ever, <laughs> again. <laughs> but maybe that's a pro too. That's right. Defy the norm. All right. She stole mine, first of all, so <laughs> not fair. <laughs> Well, yeah. actually, I know for Isabel that this is like a huge pro that she loves having a different oh, view every day or yeah, every that's few what days. I'd say. I guess the pro is that um, like you live aligned uh, with what you want and your values 
naturally and you get rid of all distractions or unnecessary things so you're set up to be in an environment and live aligned with what matters to you the cons i guess i'd say is that while this can be have wiggle room i guess is that you don't meet many people your age definitely that's a hard part hey tati <laughs> what are the pros and cons of living in an rv as a kid what do you like about RV living and what do you not like about RV living? Uh, I know what pros and cons mean. Okay. Um, living in RV means I can't sew usually. Oh, yeah, we don't travel do, with your sewing machine. I can't do gymnastics. Um, I can't, I just got a piano, so I can't play the piano because my mom doesn't let me get it, bring it in. What are the um, pros? Anything, cons any pros? Well, those lot. were the cons, by the way. <laughs> what are the pros? Yeah. What do you like about yeah. it? Um, I like how I can almost every day wake up in a new place. I love being around nature. And... I think for you, um, you like warm weather. Yeah. But not too warm. But it was... I like 70 degrees. Yeah. I think 60. Tati's chasing 60. Well, thank you. There you have it. So the, the pros and cons of RV living with kids spoken from the source. Uh, I think no matter what, if uh, as a parent, you're going to win some and you're going to lose some. And sometimes you just have to average out the wins and the losses and just know if in your heart it feels right, you're probably doing the right thing. No matter what, I could provide my kids a full house with every single toy and gadget that they wanted and they'd still find something to complain about. So overall, I do think it is a kind of, I don't really know what we're planning on doing in the future, kind of waiting out to see how things pivot or don't pivot in the world. But right now we're trying to live in our RV as much as possible. We still have, we're gonna go back to our house in Polson. And so for them right now, they get uh, a couple weeks of playing. There seems like the musical instruments is like the biggest thing everybody misses. Not everybody, but the younger ones miss. Um, I know this summer we plan on being out in the wilderness as much as possible. So hopefully the, the little trade off between getting to use their sewing machine and guitar and drum set and all that, and then um, being out in nature. You know, I think a big part is just making your kids aware of balance, you know, is a huge, that's what a life tool that is, right? All right, so we'll see you tomorrow.